everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is the first video of 2017 and new year, new gear. I'm starting off with a brand spanking new camera, which is much more professional than my last camera, so I'm still trying to figure out like how to work it. Uh, I'll be the first one to say it, put it out there right now. I am terrible with technical stuff. Like you would think because I'm on YouTube, that'd be better at that kind of thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I have way more technical difficulties than like anybody I know all put together. So while I'm figuring out what I'm doing with this thing, I'm going to be focusing on my laptop over here. So at some point throughout this video, you are going to hear like a zzz noise. That's just the fan of my laptop. But just so you know, if it's bothering you, it's bothering me 5,000 times more. We are back over at the vanity. I'm so happy about that. I just felt like I needed to just bring it back over here because I just feel the most at home when I'm closest to my makeup. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever it is that you celebrate and of course a very very happy new year and I'm really excited to just kick off the new year with this video so before we jump on in do me a favor and like this video if you like what you see and go ahead and hit the little red button down well down here to subscribe so you never miss a video from me in the future so today's video is my 2016 beauty favorites best of beauty 2016 whatever you want to call it it's pretty much all all of the products that were just giving me life in 2016 in every single category of makeup so I'm gonna be talking fast in this video to get through everything try to keep up okay so I'm gonna be taking you through these products in the order that I would apply them uh, just you know going through and picking them out to talk about I always go through my makeup routine in my head and pick them out So it makes sense, but I'm gonna be starting off with eye products today because if you watch my last like holiday tutorial that I did I did my eyeshadow first which I Never used to do like I can't stress this enough I never used to think it was possible for me to do my makeup that way and ever since I did that video I've been addicted do to doing my makeup that way. Can I even get through one sentence? Oh my god so we're gonna start off with eye products, and I think it's just so fitting too that I start off with the Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette. I would say this is probably top three most favorite products ever, or at least in 2016. This eyeshadow palette just single-handedly changed the way that I thought about doing like my everyday looks. Um, and of course, it's really, really messy. Does anybody have a Modern Renaissance palette out there that isn't messy at this point. I mean, this pink felt is just asking for it. I digress. I love this one so, so much. The colors in here are absolutely stunning, and you can see I have touched pan on quite a few of these shadows at this point, which kind of brings me to the first reason why I actually love these shadows. Uh, yes, you will touch pan on these way more quickly than you would other colors because they're just such a soft, soft texture but it means that they're so easy to blend. Everything from the shimmers to the mattes to the bright colors just apply so beautifully and evenly with any kind of brush, really. Uh, they almost blend themselves out. It looks like you've got a permanent filter on your eyeballs because your eye makeup just always looks perfectly blended, but it's the shadows. They are just so easy to work with. All Anastasia shadows are amazing, but specifically within this palette, these are just an amazing texture all to themselves. So that's the first thing I love about this. So that's why I don't really mind that I hit pan on them so quickly. The second reason why I love this is because it just honestly inspired me so much in the way that I do my makeup on a daily basis to kind of step out of my comfort zone and use like berry colors and pink colors and reds and rich orange shades in my everyday looks and I realized that you can do that and you can do it in a way that looks amazing because all of these are warm tones so they all work so well together so it had like a huge impact on just the way I think about color and that's why I think it's fitting that I talk about this first and I just love this palette so much I would highly recommend you guys go check it out if you don't have it already, it's just, it's honestly a masterpiece. I love this. And secondly, I wanted to mention the Tartlet in Bloom palette by Tarte Cosmetics. Now, this little palette is just so pretty. I really love the original, but this one totally blew me out of the water. It's just more on the rosier side. It's just really beautiful, beautiful tones. Looking at it now, since I've been using the Modern Renaissance, it actually looks kind of more muted than I remember, but nevertheless, it's beautiful, it's soft, it's springy, you know. It's um, just a great palette, and I got so much use out of this thing. And then you see this one hanging out over here. So recently I posted a picture on Instagram. If you're not following me, 
Girl, I thought we were friends. If you're not following me on Instagram, my handle is the same as it is here. It's Makeup by Allie. And I posted a picture of my everyday palette, and I saw so many requests to do a video on it. So I'm going to do a video on, like, my everyday eyeshadows. That'll be the next one I film, possibly tonight after I film this. And I love my Makeup Geek Z palettes. I really, really do. They're incredible. I only ordered these Makeup Forever ones after I saw that they're only, like, 17 bucks, which is insane. So I ordered two of these just because I wanted to, again, challenge myself and try to fit some more colors in there so I can just be inspired to you know try out some more colors in my everyday looks that's really the only reason that I tried these and I am liking them a lot so far so just so you know the video on all these shades is coming very soon and I really have two primers that I go to for different things sometimes I use them together they're really just my favorite um, the first one I want to talk about is this Marc Jacobs coconut primer I don't think I've ever really loved a primer <sighs> more than I love this one. It has the most unique cushiony feel to it. I know I use that word every time I go to describe this, but it's just really the best word to describe it. Like it just has this amazing cloud like soft texture and it puts down a really nice cushion between your skin and your foundation. It really, really makes your skin just look and feel so, so nice. Uh, I have to say this one is awesome. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but if you can swing it I would definitely recommend trying it out It's just kind of more of an experience than a primer and then the benefit the professional matte rescue is the other one that I just love so much and I remember mentioning this like back in the summer But I don't even remember having issues with my skin being shiny all summer because this is just crazy good stuff and that's the back of it. That's what the front looks like. What I like to do is sometimes use them together. So I'll do the Marc Jacobs primer and then I'll take this one and apply it to just some spot treat some areas that usually tend to get more shiny, like right in here in between my eyes, you know, right here on either side of my nose, the center of my chin, that kind of a thing. Um, so this one is awesome. I actually love this one, I think, more than the original professional. Shh, don't tell anybody I said that. And then moving on to foundations. So I'm only going to make a quick mention of this one because uh, you guys have heard me talk about this so many times. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Undetectable Medium to Full Coverage Foundation. And this one just never ceases to amaze me, to be honest. I feel like every time I apply this one, it just looks great. It doesn't sink into the texture of your skin, so it always looks really smooth and fresh and radiant and natural and looks like authentic skin. Um, it's so, so nice. It has great coverage. So if you're like that medium to full coverage kind of girl, you're not going to feel like you have a ton of makeup on your face. The one that works most, say it with me, natural beige is the one that works most often for me. And even if I'm using like a new foundation or trying one out, I always find myself blending just a little dab of this one into it because it just makes everything look that much better. So that's all I'm going to say about this one. Just know I love it. The next one is this little stick foundation. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. The shade that I wear is Warm Ivory. Sometimes stick foundations can tend to be very dense and they can look really thick and cakey on the skin. This one never looks like that. First of all, the shape is genius. You can just get in there right around your nose, around your eyebrows, whatever you need to do. You can put it in like targeted areas if you just want to highlight or contour, do whatever you want to do. But um, it goes on, so it just glides right on. It is so smooth. It looks like your skin, but a little bit better. Similar to the Too Faced one. As you're blending it into your skin, you almost feel like your actual skin is just becoming more perfected. It doesn't look like makeup. It's just crazy how how beautiful this is um it lasts so well throughout the day that is the other thing like it wears insanely well it doesn't really wear off uh, patchy or uneven it doesn't do any of those weird faux pas things that we don't want a foundation to do it just stays put it doesn't get shiny either which i've had issues with um with other stick foundations this product is top of the crop cream of the crop. <laughs> it's really, really good. This is the L'Oreal 24 hour infallible pro glow foundation. I think that this one might be a little light for me. If you're comparing like skin tone wise, this is sand beige. So I might go back and try to find another one, but I love this. Uh, L'Oreal has always been a go-to in the foundation department for me, as far as drugstore products go, their foundations, they always just seem to hit it right on target with the shades. They have a lot of shades. They have a lot of undertones.
tones. So that's always really great. And I love this one. I love applying this with a beauty blender just to get a nice, um, like radiant light application with this one. So I have tried this more recently. This is like, I believe this recently came out, but I've been really, really liking it a lot. And I just wanted to give it a shout out in this video. Okay. So again, in the order I do my makeup, my foundation's on and then I'm moving on to brows. When I do my brows, I always start off with a coat of clear brow gel by Anastasia. You could use like any clear brow gel, I'll be honest with you. You could use like a clear mascara if you wanted to. So that's not like a must must have, but that's my personal favorite one. And then I'll always go in with the brow is also by Anastasia in the shade taupe is the one I've been using the most and uh, thoughts and prayers for my brow is here. Apparently I was like manhandling it the other day and I was filling my brows and I snapped off the little spoolie brush, which has never happened to me before, but it happened. Uh, but I love this thing. I was using the brow definer for a little while by Anastasia and then I just ended up going back to this and I'm just stuck on this. Like I really love it. It just has really great pigmentation, especially when you pair it with the clear brow gel. You can also really get the natural direction of the brow hairs by just like making little short tiny strokes with this. So it's just an incredible product. There's a reason that Anastasia is the queen of brows. And I have to give kudos to Benefit because when they launched their new collection of brow products, I believe that was back in like May of last year, I was just blown away. They came out with a ton of new products and my favorite by far was the Cabrow. So this is like a little pomade or a little brown mousse, if you will. Uh, this is, I like this one far better than any other brow pomade I have tried though. It's so different and it's great because this does not, for me, this doesn't dry out. So it always glides on really nice and smooth. The color that I use, by the way, is shade two, but I just love the way it looks on my eyebrows. It's very versatile. You can build it up and keep Keep filling them in and keep working with your eyebrows without getting like a ton of product in there and feeling like you have like all this thick goopy gunk in your eyebrows. It never looks heavy. It's like almost magical. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm always using the brush that comes with it. It's the perfect density. It's the perfect size. It's so precise. It works with the product really, really well. And the other thing I love about it is no matter how dirty it gets, which it gets dirty. Okay. It gets real dirty it always applies the product beautifully. And in any other pomade I've ever, that was like my one pet peeve of pomades. You always have to have a fresh, clean brush. If there's any trace of any dry product on there, it's just not gonna work the same. With this brush, I've tested the limits of this thing and I've gone a while without cleaning it and it just always works the same. And then the Benefit Erase Paste, I use the shade number two. This stuff is crazy. If you have super scary dark circles like I do, then you will know how much a really good color corrector can just change your life. This one is like a pink, um, like a pinky peach salmon -y. I want to say like a salmon tone. It just packs so much of a punch. I can just take a little bit of this and just press it into my skin and it just completely zaps away my dark circles. Now, of course, I will go on top of this with another concealer to help it match to my skin tone. And then this concealer is just my holy grail. What can I say? I love the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I am a believer for life. I try a lot of different concealers, but this one is like the only one that has that coverage to where those little dark pesky half moon dark circles don't show through it. It's just like, watcha, it's a total barrier to my dark circles and it looks beautiful and airbrushed and even in full coverage and I just love it. It's instant perfect lighting for your face. I know a lot of people say that they have issues with this creasing. I did too when I first started using it um, until I tried it with the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Powder which brings me to my next favorite. I love this. And that made all the difference. I never have an issue with it creasing at all now. I also really love the RCMA No Color Powder, but I think I love this one a little bit more because I've kind of stuck with this one more. And it's a funny story with this because when I first tried this, I hated it. It was a horrible experience the first time I tried it. I tried applying it under my eyes, which is like a brush and it looked dark, it looked dingy and dull and dry. It made my um, under eyes even darker. And so I went back in and tried it again. A couple months later, I used a damp beauty blender, dipped it in there and just like packed it on. And it's funny how just using a thicker layer of it makes it look like a completely different product. Now, of course I go back in and dust away all that excess after I'm done and it's like done sinking in, but it's just funny how 
trying a different application method can totally switch up the results that you get. So I love this. This stuff is incredible. You notice it in pictures. You notice it when you go to touch up your makeup. I just see it all the time. I, I love the way that this looks. I wish I could set my whole face with this. It's a little bit too light to set my whole face with. I start to get, I don't know, like a lighter cast to my skin, but I will take it and just kind of dust it around the center of my face because I just love how perfect it makes your skin look and I just like the finish of it. Moving on to face powder. There's really only one face powder that has my heart and it is the MAC Studio Fix Powder. So I always have two shades of this on hand. So this one is NC35, this is NC42. I guess I skip over NC40. I think that one is like just too orangey for me or something, but either way, if I have both of these shades on hand, I can, you know, find a powder that'll match my skin tone at any point throughout the year. This one is like my super, super summertime or like really, really self tan doused in self tanner shade. This one is one I'm embracing the pale. Probably the most perfected look to the skin that I've ever found in like a powder or powder foundation. I wear it both ways to set and just as a powder foundation. Full coverage, completely evens everything out. It's really, really fast too when you're doing just a powder foundation because it has such great coverage. You can just go really, really quick. It builds up like that and um, it lasts a really long time too throughout the day. Um, I just love this stuff. I haven't really tried any other setting powders in recent memory. I just stick with these, they're my faves. I do have two bronzers to show you guys. Um, a high-end favorite and a drugstore favorite. They're kinda, they do two different things too, I would say. This is my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Give Me Sun. I don't know what I can say about this bronzer that hasn't already been said a thousand times because I've been using this for like five years straight. I love this so much. It's just the perfect color for me. It might be a little orangey for some people, but I love it. It's so perfect. It just gives you a really warm, like vacation bronzy look. I love the way it blends out. It never looks muddy. It just always looks nice and even on the skin. And then my drugstore favorite and also um, more just like a radiant look bronzer because this one's kind of shimmery. This is the Milani Baked Bronzer, the Soleil Baked Bronzer. And this one is very, very good too. Again, this one is great for when you feel like the finish of your skin is just looking a little flat and you want to like dust it around the face to bring back some radiance. It's perfect perfect for that. This is probably, I mean, this is definitely my favorite drugstore bronzer that I've ever found. It's a soft radiance too. It's not like super, super shimmery, so you can still create some shadows. You can get some sculpting action with this one. Moving on, I have a newer, newish favorite contour product to show you guys. I don't even think I've talked about this in a video yet, but I really love it. It's the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette. Now this does have a shade name, it is Dulce de Leche, so I'm assuming there's other shades, but I love this one. Um, the tone of this is exactly what I want in a contouring product. It's like that perfect, even fawn color, so it's not too cool tone. I know we've all heard a million times, a cool tone powder is what you want to contour because it simulates a shadow. You know, you can go too far with that. I see so many contouring products that are just way too gray, like way too accurate tone. I don't think it really complements my skin tone that well. Like it just, those don't work for me. I want to look like I'm alive. I don't want to have like a zombie contour. You know what I mean? So this one is great because I just love the tone of it. It's the softest powder I have ever felt in my life. Like you feel like you're going to make a divot into it when you touch it. It's so creamy feeling. So I love that. It goes on just so soft and smooth and blends out really well. So I use this today to do my makeup. Um, I really, really love this and it's super affordable. So I do realize that I skipped over liner and mascara. So I'm gonna, we're gonna circle back around to that in a second. I just wanna show you some blushes really quickly. This Morphe 9 and Naturally Blushed palette is great. I've been using this all the time. They're neutral colors, they're warmer, but you have a variety of different shades. And these shimmer colors here are really nice because it's just that soft shimmer that you, like I like to use those when I just want to blend out my blush a little bit or just bring it to life a little bit more, give it more of a glow. So usually what I end up doing is just mixing together a bunch of these and applying them all to my cheeks. You guys know I like to do that anyway, so it's nice. I don't feel as guilty when it's all in one blush palette. Mix a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and come up with a custom color. So I like this. It's also not like a big bulky blush palette. It's nice and light. You know, it's just easy. I had to touch on these blushes by Lorac. So when these buildable blushes came out, 
I could not believe how great they were. I think most of them are matte. All the ones that I have are matte, but I was so impressed with these that I went out and bought a ton more colors. So I have here Technicolor, Tinge, Spectra, and Prism. If I could design a blush formula, it would be just like this. They go on perfectly, full color, very pigmented. You only need a little tiny bit. They just grab on to your foundation and they really show up and they last a really long time. And as you can see, the colors are stunning. I also just have to throw in another Milani product. This is the Rose de Oro Baked Powder Blush. I find myself using this all the time. Like if I'm traveling, this is the one I'm bringing with me. This one and MAC Warm Soul. I feel like I've talked about that five quadrillion times though, so you, you just know it's a given. I love MAC Warm Soul. But this Milani Baked Blush is just just so beautiful. It is a rose gold shade, which a lot of times you think of, you know, for your eyes or whatever, but it's just the perfect color for your cheeks. Um, if I'm feeling like my face or my complexion is looking a little flat, I'll just take this or I need a little more color on my cheeks. I always just reach to this. It's just like that perfect fixer upper where it just gives you a little radiance. It gives you a little color and it makes you look alive. And it's just a gorgeous, product to look at, let alone to apply. So I really, really love these. All of the Milani baked blushes are phenomenal, but this has definitely been my favorite color. But we're just taking it back to the eyes for a minute, just one little minute. This was like a landslide victory for Tarte in this category because they have the winning mascara and the winning liner of the year, in my opinion. So when I used to film these videos before, I feel like I would show you a million different eyeliners. I have ones for the waterline. I've had ones for, you know, doing winged eyeliner. And now it's so nice to be able to say, I just have one recommendation and it is this double take liner. So you have the retractable side, which is awesome for the waterline. I always tight line with this before I pop on false lashes to just make your lashes look really thicker. When you flip it over to the felt side, this is a great felt tip liner. It's a great shape. It's always super, super dark black. It's not shiny. It's like that deep matte jet black finish that I love personally. It's never uneven. It's just always like that stark black. It doesn't wear off. It doesn't fade. It doesn't like flake off at all. Also the TARDIS lash paint. I'm definitely a sucker for this TARDIS packaging too. I just love the black and gold splatter paint design on it. But I love this mascara and it has little teeth or little bristles on the end. Kind of similar to Benefit They're Real so you can really get in there and like work it out in those outer lashes. It's also so nice for doing your bottom lashes. It just makes your lashes so incredibly long and just really like fat and voluminous. And I love this stuff. I gotta tell you guys, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted to show you a bunch of different styles of lashes that I love. But realistically, Whenever I love a false lash, I throw away the box and then I just pop them in here. This is my House of Lashes lash case, which I love so much because it's so cute. A lot of times I just chuck them in here and it's really a hot mess. So I don't even really have like the brand new fresh in the box lashes to show you guys. I'm just gonna list a bunch of styles that I really like down below in the info box. Um, the ones I have on right now are velour lashes. You can find these at Sephora. They're from the Fluff and Thick collection. I also love adding individuals onto my lashes. I've been more into that. I love the House of Lashes individuals and also just the old classic, can't go wrong with it, Ardell individuals. And the House of Lashes lash glue. I have it in clear and black. This is the best lash glue. It's fantastic. It dries up really quickly. It stays on better than any other lash glue I've ever tried. So I definitely recommend this to you guys. Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe out. We're going to talk about highlighters. So the first thing I want to show you guys, this is the Anastasia Glow Kit in that glow. So this is kind of the more, I know they came out with like the sun dipped one, but this one is just my favorite of all of them. I do love the Moon Child. Is that what it's called? It's right here somewhere. Yeah, this, the Moon Child that has all the different colors. I just love this for the artistic value of how cool this is, but I got the most use out of that glow. Sunburst was just like that ultra bright dewy highlight. I would just, I loved having this palette because I would just layer them up. I have to give a shout out to Ofer Cosmetics because for me they were really an MVP of the makeup world, especially towards the end of the year in the fall and winter months. I really started getting into their products so, so much and I love these two highlighters. This is more of a recent release. This is Blissful and it's more of that pink tone. It's kind of like a pink champagne. So it has both warm and pinkish tones in there. So I feel like this is really versatile, work for a lot of people, it's really pretty. And then this one was 
just my go-to all-time favorite I use this almost every single time I do my makeup along with another one that I'll show you in a second this is Rodeo Drive and this is more of that candle lit golden glow so I always want to describe this as like a soft focus look even though don't get me wrong you apply this you will be beaming it is so reflective and pretty but at the same time it's got this soft focus Seeness about it. So when you apply it, it doesn't really accentuate uneven texture in the skin as much. I don't find that it does that. It doesn't give that stripe look that a really heavily metallic highlighter would. Also, I haven't been using this one as recently, but I would be nuts if I didn't mention this because this was such a staple in my makeup routine. The Laura Geller Baked Gelato Face Illuminator in Gilded Honey. This one is like more of an ultra metallic, really warm, caramelly, golden tone highlight. This is perfect in the middle of summer when you're going for that really bronzed, glowing goddess type of look. It's perfect for that. I haven't worn it as much recently just because my skin is a little bit more fair this time of year. But this is just such an incredible product. So now that my hands are just fully coated in highlighter, looking for an empty spot so I can show you guys how gorgeous this next one is. This is by ColourPop, and this is one of their Super Shock Cheek Colors in the shade Flexitarian. This is one of my favorite discoveries of the year. This is right up there with the Modern Renaissance Palo. This little teeny tiny, super inexpensive cheek color is one of my most favorite Oh, my most favorite possessions. It's so pretty. It is very, very soft, like most of the ColourPop products. Even the eyeshadows are kind of like a hybrid between a cream and a powder. You can't quite tell exactly what it is, but you know you like it. It's just like this super silky feeling to it. And girl, it is bright. This is the most intense highlighter that I own hands down without a doubt. It's kind of more of actually like a pinky color. It almost has a silvery undertone. So this one I love for, I mean, just look at that. I can't stop looking at it in my laptop. Usually I go for more warm tone highlighters, but this one is just so dang intense. The tip of my nose, right here in between my eyes, my cupid's bow, um, definitely highlight the inner corners of my eyes with this. It's perfect for that. And even I use it as an eyeshadow sometimes if I want like a really glowy eyeshadow look. So this is just so funny because it honestly just came out of nowhere. I happened to just try it one day and I haven't been able to peel myself away from it since. Have I told you lately that I love you? All right guys, and we are almost done because I still have lip products I wanna show you, but I'm not gonna go quite as crazy with the lip products as I have in the past. I just feel like going for my favorite formulas would be a more time effective way to show you my favorite lip products. I love these Bare Minerals lip liners so much. The Gen Nude Under Over Lip Liners. They're very, very soft. They're very creamy and the colors are great. And I also have to say they have lipsticks and lip glosses too. Bare Minerals in the Generation Nude or the Gen Nude collection that are fantastic. These Laura Mercier lip liners too, I love so much. The shade that I use the most is Hazelnut Tea. It's kind of just a nice medium nude, like pinky nude shade. I used it today when, I used both of these today when I did my lip color. It's not drying on the lips, they almost feel hydrating. They're very creamy, they're really highly pigmented. They just glide right on, very easy, just smooth all over your lips really quickly. I really haven't worn regular lipstick in a while. That's weird. That's really weird to think about. I also really did love the Tarte lip paints that came out. I used those a bunch in my recent videos. They are the colors. Oh my god. The color selection is insane. They're so gorgeous. I'm going to list some of my favorite shades down below or like my favorite shade of those. So definitely check those out if you haven't. A little bit drying on the lips, but it's the kind of, it's not to the point where I would not wear them. Blam. Um, Ofra. Long last liquid lipsticks. This one is in Bel Air. This is like a lighter nude, pinky nude shade. This one I love. This is Harlem. And then Brooklyn is a gorgeous, gorgeous dark brown. It's really, really similar to Chocolate Wasted by Dose of Colors. It's the closest thing I've ever found. It's like that really, really rich reddish chocolatey brown. It is stunning. These lip products are great. I feel like I'm starting to run out of adjectives to describe things as we near the end of this video, so forgive me for that. Just know, I like it a lot. I also wanted to shout out, I love the Anastasia liquid lipsticks, and this one is in the shade Ashton. This is actually a specific color that I really do wear all the time. So this actual specific color is one of my faves. It's just it's a little bit darker than a nude. It's kind of a brownie 
brownie nude, but it's just earthy. It's kind of very warm and I love it. I just find that it's like the perfect color to mix up with other stuff. You see how it's just like that toffee color? And then I saved the best for last, just kidding, it was just happened to be the last thing sitting over there, but this is one of my most favorite discoveries of the entire year. Um, I knew back like a couple months ago when I first tried these that they were going to be in this yearly favorites video. That's how much I love these Smashbox Always On liquid lipsticks. I love the packaging too. I just love that they're like these little squares. I just think it's really chic looking and the color selection is incredible. So the first thing that I love about these I mean, there's so many things, but the first thing that I love about these is they last so long, all day, hence the always on name of the product. They, I remember the first time I tried this, I couldn't believe my eyes. I think this was the first color I tried in demand, and I remember I was traveling, so I was running around, I didn't have time for touch-ups. Um, I ate a couple meals, and I checked my lipstick, and it looked exactly the same as I did when I first applied it. Like I had been eating, I had been just running around doing all kinds of stuff and my lipstick looked exactly the same. And the thing about this formula that is so great is that it gives you the look of matte lip. So if you look in the mirror, it looks like you're wearing a velvety matte lip. If you take a picture of yourself, they look matte, but they're like 99% matte. So it's that little 1% in there that still gives you that little bit of hydration, that little bit of moisturization. And and you will see, like if you touch your lips, you'll see a little bit of transfer, just a tiny little bit. Whereas if you're wearing like a straight up matte liquid lip, it will not do that. But it's that little bit of moisture that keeps it looking perfectly smooth, keeps it really comfortable to wear on your lips. They wear beautifully and they're just so comfortable. And the other thing, Okay, biscuits wigging out over there. The other thing that I really love about them is um, how amazing they apply. So you just take one swipe on the bottom lip, one swipe on the top lip, and you get full impact, full coverage color. So if you like the look of a matte lipstick, but you don't like the feeling of a matte liquid lipstick, I would definitely try these. They're just amazing, and every single color that I try, I love more, and makes me love them more and more. So I hope that I explained that right. I've been waiting for months to explain that, and at this point in the video, I am like, I'm just seriously delirious. Like, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. So with that, I bid you adieu. Whew, mama's gonna need a glass of wine after that video. That was a long in. I did not realize I was serving up this much of a booby platter. I just tracked down this little creature. Just because I feel like Biscuit hasn't said hello in a video in so long. She's keeping it squirrely. I think that's everything I had to tell you guys honestly. Like what more is there to say? Really? What more is there to say? Oh. You squirrel girl. So thank you guys so much for all of your support in 2016. I love you guys so so much. I can't tell you how much it means to me to have all of you in my extended like YouTube social media family. I really feel like when I sit down and film that I'm talking to my best girlfriends or guy friends, you know, like it's just, I love doing what I do and I feel so lucky to be able to do this and share this with you guys. You guys have just been the best group. I feel like my subscribers, not to brag, but I just feel like they're just the most positive, smart, funny people with like the best sense of humor and they're nice to each other. And I never see this like catty fighting or anything like that. I, I just love you guys so much. And uh, thank you so much for the support. And I'm so excited for the year to come. I have so many exciting things coming up and I just have so many ideas. I just felt more inspired at this moment than I ever have before. So I just feel like I'm in a great place and I just can't wait to see where the year takes me and us. So um, I love you guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.